So you mentioned that you and I might be playing in the space of ideas, but there's two ways to play in the space mm -hmm. of ideas, both of which we're currently engaging mm -hmm. in. So one is the communication of that to other people. It could be a classroom full of students, but it could be a podcast. It could be something that's uh, that's shown on YouTube and so on. Or it could be just the act of sitting alone and playing with ideas in your head, or maybe with a loved one, having a conversation that nobody gets to see. Yeah. The experience of just sort of looking up at the sky and wondering uh, different things, maybe quoting some philosophers from the past and playing with those little ideas. And that little exchange is forgotten forever, but you got to experience it. And maybe we w I wonder if it localizes that exchange of ideas for that with AI, it'll become less and less valuable to communicate with a large group of people, that you will live life intimately and, and richly just with that circle of meat bags that you seem to love. So the first is, even if you're alone in a forest, having this amazing thought, when you exit that forest, the baggage that you carry has been shifted, has been altered by that thought. When I bike to work in the morning, I listen to books and I'm alone. No one else is there. I'm having that experience by myself. And yet in the evening, when I speak with someone, an idea that was formed there could come back. Sometimes when I fall asleep, I fall asleep listening to a book. Yeah. And in the morning, I'll be full of ideas that I never even process consciously. I'll process them unconsciously. And they will shape that baggage that I carry that will then shape my interactions and again, affect ultimately all of humanity in some butterfly effect, minute kind of way. So that's one aspect. The second aspect is gatherings. So basically you and I are having a conversation which feels very private, mm -hmm. but we're sharing with the world. And then later tonight, you're coming over mm -hmm. and we're having a conversation that will be very public with dozens of other people but we will not share with the world. Yeah. <laughs> so in a way, which one's more private? The one here or the one there? Here, there's just two of us, but a lot of others listening. There, a lot of people speaking and thinking together and bouncing off each other. And maybe that will then impact your millions of, you know, uh, of audience mm -hmm. through your next conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the beauty of humanity. The fact that no matter how small, how alone, how broadcast immediately or later on something is, it still percolates through the human psyche. Human gatherings, all throughout human history, there's been gatherings. I, I wonder how those gatherings have impacted the direction of human civilization. Just uh, thinking of in the early days of the Nazi party, it was a small collection of people gathering and the uh, the kernel of an idea, in that case, an evil idea, uh, gave birth to something that actually had a transformative impact on all of human civilization. And then there's similar kind of gatherings that lead to positive transformations. 